Infinite geometry series. Here is the question. We have t1, t2, t3, dot, dot, dot. It's an infinite geometry sequence. And we know tn over s infinity minus sn equals 2 over 3 for every n. We are going to find the common ratio. So here's the deal. Let's go over some notations first. t1, comma, t2, comma, t3, and so on. It's a sequence because this is just a list of the terms. tn here is the nth term. And when we have a geometric sequence, we do have a general formula for tn. So let me write that down. The nth term is just going to be, we start with the first term, which is t1, and then we multiply by r, which is the common ratio, and then raise that to the n minus 1 power, just like that. And the reason it's, been, it's, it's the following. Imagine how would you get to t4? Well, it's a geometric sequence, meaning that each every time you just have to multiply by the common ratio to get to the next term. So, how many times do we have to multiply the r to get to t4? Three times. So we start with t1, and then multiply by r, right? And this is going to be, if this is a 4, you multiply the r three times. So that's why this is the general formula. Next, sn is the nth partial sum, meaning we have the following. You start with the first term, and then you are going to add it with the next term, which is t2, and then next term, which is t3, and then so on, so on, so on. But you are going to stop right here at tn. You only have a finite amount of terms, so you don't have to worry about what the common ratio is. You will always get a finite result. And we have a formula for that as well. This right here will give us, you start with t1, and you are going to multiply this by 1 minus r raised to the nth power. Keep in mind though, for the sn formula, this is r to the nth power. But for the tn formula, you get r to the n minus 1. Right? Not done yet, because we still have to divide it by 1 minus r. Sometimes though, you might see people write r to the n minus 1 over r minus 1 times t1. That's fine. If you switch to the water right here, make sure you switch the water right here. It's just a matter of multiply a negative on top and a negative on the bottom. They are equivalent. If you want to see a proof of this, that will be another video. Anyway, now, lastly, s infinity. This right here means we are going to start with t1 and then add it with t2 and then so on, so on, so on. But here, we are not going to stop. We are going to add up infinitely many of these terms. So you have to be careful. In order for this to converge, and I will tell you, this will be possibly converging to the first term, which is t1, over 1 minus the common ratio. But you can only use this formula under the condition that the absolute value of r being less than 1. If you don't have that, then in fact, this does not converge. Imagine if r is equal to 2, then you get bigger, bigger, bigger terms, right? and you end up with like infinity. So these are the formulas that we are going to use. Everything has the R. We can just throw that in here and then solve R. That's pretty much what the question is all about. So let's see. I'll put this right here. We get T1 times R to the N minus one over s infinity is t1 over 1 minus r, and then minus sn is that. So we have t1 over 1 minus r, almost the same, but then don't forget here we have to do the 1 minus r to the n. And of course, we are going to make this equal to 2 over 3. And now we just have to solve that equation. And to do so, let's just work on the left-hand side, simplify it. Top and bottom, let me just multiply by 1 minus r. Well, if you would like, you can also cross multiply. I think this right here might be easier though. So right here, let's see. Here we will just get t1 times r to the n minus 1 times 1 minus r over here. This times this, we will just cancel and we have t1. And then this times this, again, they cancel and then just minus. Here we have t1 and then t 
times 1 minus r to the n. And then notice I can factor out the t1. So if I factor that out, we get t1 times, this will be 1 minus the parentheses 1 minus r to the n, like so. And then perhaps I can distribute that as well. So this is t1 times 1, and then this right here becomes minus 1, and then minus minus becomes a plus, and then r to the n, like so. After this, we can see that, of course, t1 cannot be 0 because otherwise all the terms are just 0. There's no way to get 2 over 3, right? So not possible. But anyway, though, t1 and t1 cancel. So on the left-hand side, we will see the following. And let me write that down right here. And of course, this is still equal to 2 over 3. The top is just this times that. So perhaps it will distribute. So we get r to the n minus 1 minus r to the n minus 1 times r to the first power. You add the exponents. n minus 1 plus 1 is just n. So it's r to the n over. Remember this and that cancel it. This is just an intermediate step. So we just have this right here. But 1 minus 1 is also you know, cancel. So we just have r to the n on the bottom. <laughs> and then we will get 2 over 3. All right, so we are almost there. How can we make it happen though? Have a look, this right here is the same as saying r to the n times r to the negative 1. So I can factor out r to the n on the top, and then I will just get r to the negative 1 minus 1 over r to the n equals 2 over 3, and then cancel out r to the n. r to the negative 1 is the same as 1 over r, minus 1 equals 2 third, And then, of course, just go ahead and finish this. Add 1 to both sides, then we get 1 over r equals 2 over 3 plus 1. 1 is the same as 3 over 3, so we get 5 over 3. But this is not r, this is 1 over r. So from here, we'll just do the reciprocal of both sides. So finally, r equals 3 over 5. Is this absolute value less than 1? Yes, that's why the S infinity makes sense. So here we have it, R equals 3 over 5, and that solves the question. That's it.